Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Dragonfly Game UK, and we are back in Station Ears. Uh, following on from our previous episode around networks and logic gates, so that's logic readers, logic writers, batch readers, batch writers, mirrors, um, logic mirrors, to say, and how to set up the various networks and how networks affect each other and how you've got to segregate them. I thought I'd go on to very basic programming. And I mean very basic programming. I'm not a programmer. I I'm I'm just know there are a lot of people out there really struggle with the programming in this game. And while you don't have to be able to program in this game, you can do stuff with logic gates and some um, already pre-configured cards like the airlock controllers. Being able to program even a little bit certainly makes for a better game experience and helps you in certain ways. So you, so you can automate certain things. So it always just useful to learn the program. Now, Station Ears use an unusual language called MIPS, M-I-P-S. Uh, I'd never come across it before when I started playing this game, and when I first started using it as a non-programmer, I, I found it really confusing, which is why I'm doing this little help here, this little programming tutorial. Hopefully to try and resolve some of the initial issues I had with it. MIPS is a programming language, it does exist. Um, it is quite a powerful language, actually, once you get used to it. It can condense many lines of basic or Python or, thing, or something like that down into single lines of code, which are fairly simple to assemble. I'll go over that, I'll show you what I mean by that as I do a bit of programming. But yeah, certainly if you want to learn more about the language, uh, Google MIPS, uh, and you'll find plenty of help on the internet on how to use it. The actual in-game has quite a bit of help as well. Now there's two ways you can program these chips. The first way is by building a computer and having it attached to your network. Let me just do something first. Let me just... Um, I see housing 1. I see housing 2. If you ever use this labeler, make sure you turn it off by hitting the right mouse button and you see the screen goes dark. This labeler becomes invaluable when you've got lots of things on a network. Right, back to the computer. Um, the computer is made of just a computer kit and a IC editor motherboard which you've got to make separately. Both can be made on an electronics printer. So let's just... IC editor, so IC editor motherboard, that's that one. I haven't got any material in here so I can't print it. But that's what you want, the IC editor motherboard or the and the computer kit. And the computer kit is fairly simple again, it's a bit of gold, iron and copper. You can make it quite early on. It has a little flap here which you need to open and then put the IC editor board in there. Close the flap, connect the power and the data to your network and you're ready to go to turn it on. First thing you'll see is a drop down. Uh, is this screen here and with a drop down. So if you click on this drop down. You've got two options. It's really difficult to see, sorry. You've got two options. I see housing 1 and I see housing 2. Now you know why I labelled them. If I hadn't labelled them, it would just say I see housing and I see housing. How would you tell them apart? You wouldn't. So you can pick whichever one you want here. And that is the one that's going to program. As long as there is a chip in there, you can program it. Well, you can actually program it. You just can't export to it. Okay, so let's say I see housing 1. We then click on edit. And this brings us to our edit screen. So that's one way of being able to programming. Just before getting the program, I'm going to show you the other way. And this is the way I tend to do within my game. I use a laptop. Again, you can be printed on the electronics printer. Laptop. But it requires quite a bit more material. Some of which isn't available that early in the game. But it doesn't take you too long to get it. But I much prefer the laptop. To program the laptop to go screen as best I can. The drop down is just laptop. There's only one thing there. Oh, what thing should you note? Know put this back in my backpack. You still have to insert a IC editor card into the laptop and a battery to get it to work. So you still need that IC editor and a battery in the laptop. Then you just literally drag the laptop out of your inventory and drop it on the floor. Click on the lid and it's opened. Now I can't do anything, I can't edit here by the way, I can't edit, but I can't save it anywhere other than in this. So both of these, once you finish programming, you've got to hit the export button. Just for ease, I'm going to stick that back in my backpack. 
and we use this one. So what I did in my previous video was show you how you could take settings or readings from the daylight sensor, read them through a logic reader, write them through a logic writer to a display or if you've got a solar panel attached, a solar panel. If you want to read more than one, you need, so if you want to read the vertical and horizontal, you've got to then have some maths chips attached to do the conversion because a single daylight center cannot cover both the vertical and a horizontal without doing calculations to those numbers. If I place this horizontally on the wall here, I'll probably be able to do horizontal. Uh, down here, it's a vertical, sorry. If I place it on the wall here, I can read the vertical. Down here, I'm using horizontal, depending on the rotation of this as well. The, the orientation of this actually has a difference. So, let me go grab another sensor kit. There we go, sensor kit. Let's just place that one back down. And we've got one on a wall over there already. So, and I'll actually, yeah, we've got one already. So, if we look at this, if we look at the horizontal. And the vertical it's 2947 this one is 6047 or minus 6047 this one is minus 14946 and this one is 12245 so the vertical is staying the same the horizontal is changing on the orientation of this um, sensor so I typically set them facing north or east north usually set it north so it'd be that one and that gives you the most accurate reading so it's saying horizontal is 131 well if that's 180 that's yeah that's where it is so facing north what i mean by facing north there's these little cutouts here sort of making a point so pointing that way so let's take these up and we place this one back down this way facing north and just quickly wire it up. That way we know we don't need to do anything to the calculation for the horizontal plane. It's already been sorted out for us by the orientation of this solar panel. Now the vertical plane, again if I look at this and we look at vertical here, it's 39 degrees. This one is 123 degrees. Actually, what I'd probably do with this one is I was mounting it on the surface, I mount it so it's pointing up like so. Yeah. So then we've got this one again, what's it? Vertical is 39. On this one, vertical is 126. Is it, which way is that going? Can I remember? 128 is going up. So that is 90. That is 0. 90. 180, 270, back to zero. Well, that doesn't look quite right for being directly up. Where's the sun? That's, uh, the sun's about the size it's going to get there, isn't it? What's a vertical on this one? I would say this one's actually closer. 43 degrees. Oh, no, 43 degrees. <laughs> 180, yeah, that's right there. That's 44 degrees. That's 134 degrees, so it's a 90 degrees out on the vertical. Okay, let's do something here. So this is a solar panel. This is a heavy solar panel, but the same goes for the basic tracking solar panels. This is a heavy dual because it's got dual inputs. It's got the power on this side, network on the far side, I typically just have them so that combined input as it is here. So if I roll the mouse, you can see it's gone from heavy dual to heavy. And we've just got the plus on this left hand side here. And you can't really see it, but if I place it, you can now see that's got both the network and the power symbols on this side. Okay, so that's place that. Let me just use my magic stick just to finish building it. Let me put another one down. I just want to show something else on this as well. Again, orientation is everything. Right. 
let's just quickly wire these up. Right, currently, um, so I've wired them, just wired them into my little network here. If I look at this, the tooltip tells me that we're not producing any power because the sun's gone down. The sun's gone down over there. Behind those hills, so we're not getting any light. That doesn't matter, we can start doing our program. I just want to show you these issues anyway. So, right, first thing I want to do is we want to start programming this and we want to tell it what devices are connected. Now, there are three main ways of connecting devices. The first one is to assign a pin to a pin and you use a screwdriver to do that. So, if, say we wanted the um, daylight sensor on pin 0, that's D0 by the way. D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. So you can have a maximum of six devices connected to an IC using the pins. So let's just set this up. Daylight sensor. If we click on the pin with the screwdriver, you can see we can select computer. No, daylight sensor. There we go. So we now selected that daylight sensor on that pin. I don't want to select the solar panels yet, so I want to show you something different. I want to select the solar panels. Actually, I'll show you, just for the sake of it. Um, computer, daylight sensor. I've got two LEDs, horizontal LED, vertical LED. So we'll say horizontal on that pin. And then... Vertical on pin 2. Now, I don't know if you notice, and I had two solar panels come up. We don't know which one of these is which. So it's difficult to program individual solar panels like that or when you're programming multiple of the same things. Solar panels is usually the main one. You want to read, uh, write the same data to them. So in this case, I'm not going to assign these to a pin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assign them a number in the software. And I'll show you to do that later. But for now, we're just going to start programming these First things first, get rid of the screwdriver. To program those chips, we go to select the chip we want. So IC Housing 1, that is this one. You can see it says IC Housing 1, IC Housing 2. The chip is in there, so I don't need to worry about anything else. I just click on Edit, and then we're now into Edit Mode. In here, you've got all the line numbers down the left-hand side. You have a library here where you can uh, pull up previous written programs if you've saved them. You can pull some in from... Steam, that's the little Steam icon there, and if you set to go into the workshops for station years on Steam, you can pull down programs that other people have written, which is quite useful. So, you know, that one, Advanced Automatic Furnace, I just click on, I think it's that arrow. Yeah, it's that one. It's hard to see with the right behind it. It's that one there with a the little arrow pointing in. You want to load this over right, and that's loaded that program. So that's some, a program somebody else has written. As you can see, there's a lot on here. Yeah, um, don't want that, so clear that. So that's one way of getting your program, so you can load them. If you've written a program yourself, you click on Library, and you click Create New, give it a name, click Confirm, and it will save, and it'll be in this list. You can copy and paste within the program, uh, within the editor. You can also paste from within the editor to Notepad on your desktop, and you can write from Notepad into the editor as well, copy and paste. I have done the copy and paste out, I'm not pasted back in again. So that's what they were for. Up here we just got transparency because the time is ticking while we are in this editor currently. Let's come out of there, let's... If we bring the editor up while I'm facing... Oh, I can't. <laughs> if I was facing the sun, you'd see the sun be able to come up behind the editor. So you can go on to um, partially opaque or partially transparent, and see what's going on behind. But it just makes it more difficult to program. What you can do is this little pause button here, that pauses game time. So the game is no longer running in your background. If you're really struggling with something, I find that quite useful, just to do that. And here we have oops, a load of variables. This is a load of this lists all the variables that can be used, uh, and various things. I don't use that one much of a monitor, so I'm looking for a variable for something. I tend to use the Stationpedia, come out of the editor, hit Stationpedia, try and get the search system to work. 
solar panel heavy so there we go heavy solar panel that's not the one i want actually no it is that one it is that one apologies that's the one that we've got just over here it just doesn't look like it from that picture so i can go in here and i can see what the variables are so these are the logic variables i need to worry about for this item back into the editor that's that's one way of getting the variables rather than using that this one brings up a list of come on other variables that it can be used within the game again i don't really use it much it's quite good if you're looking for ratios of things if you can't remember spelling ratio car so you've got things like ratio carbon dioxide they can find out you know what it does the most useful one is this one this one lists the uh, functions or the commands and this by far is the most important one so you've seen me using things in the past like yield and that tells you what it is yield uh, pause execution for one tick in the game that's approximately half a second what else you may say alias label register device reference with name the device reference also affects what is shown on the screen on the IC base so this is where we use this in fact I use it now alias sun sense so that's our daylight sensor d0 so we've connected our daylight sensor to d0 in the hardware by selecting the pin this is just allocating it in the software and given a usable name i could reference d0 within the software but obviously using something like sunsense just makes it that bit easier i know what i'm talking about when i say sunsense rather than what's on d0 what's on d1 and then we said i think we said alias led vert vertical on d1 alias led horizontal on d2 i'll tell you now you will get these mixed up at some point you'll have the wrong thing on the wrong pin and you'll be scratching your head wondering why your program's not working always check these check that what you've got set here matches what you've got configured on the pins okay so that's what alias does that alias it just gives you a i want to alias that to be that so that well referencing d0 and type sun sense and the software knows i mean d i mean d0 okay so that's what alias does so the first bit of the program you're setting up your devices that you're referencing directly through the pins so that's one way of um communicating with your devices so another way of um writing to items rather than going through the pins because we didn't load the solar panels on the pins is to write to a batch so if you remember our batch writer we can do the same here except as we use sb which is save batch and then we paste using control v the hashtag number the prefab hash number sorry and to get the prefab hash number go into stationpedia find the device you want so we know that this is our heavy solar panels and there's a prefab hash click on that that's copied to the clipboard come back in your program if i just delete that i know it's already but i delete it Control v and it pastes it in so that now anything at sb is save batch that's equivalent to the you know, logic batch writer but what if i want to just write to one of them rather than writing to both panels at once what if i want to write just to one of them so then you can if you don't want to set them up on the pins because you've got too many you can use a tablet with a configuration card inside it so if that's something you printed on the electronics printer drop it into your tablet now come up to your device turn your tablet on and it gives you a list of information about this device and what you need to look at is the reference id which is the second one from the bottom in this case it's 2854 for this solar panel and 2861 for this solar panel to be able to do this in software to write them in software you've got to define what they are so define solar say sp solar panel one and i can't remember the number was 2861 i think was one of them and define solar panel two let's go see what the other one was because my memory is terrible 
2861, that was that one. 2854. 2854. So now I'm defining solar panel 1, solar panel 2. If I when I want to write to them, I use the command SD, which is save device. SP1. It's all going to be the same case. SP1. So the software now knows all right, SP1. It is that device with that reference ID on the network. This all sounds confusing, I know, but honestly, it makes sense. Um, and if I just want to write to something, uh, one of these ones, I want to say something to one of these ones, it's just a straight S and then what it is. So in this case, it would be LED vertical. So that one will write to a device that's connected to a pin. SB will write to a batch of the same type of units using a prefab hash. SD will write to a specific device defined by its reference ID, which you define at the beginning of the software, and you get the reference ID by using a configurator in a tablet and pointing it at the device. Now that is a lot of information to take in, and it's quite confusing, but get this and it makes your life a bit easier. So an S is just a straight save to a device connected via pin. SB, batch, remember B for batch, writes to a batch of items. SD is device, write to a single device with its, once you've defined its reference ID to a name you can understand, and that will make life easier. Loading information from is exactly the same, exactly the same, it's just L to read from a one year devices connected to the pins. LD to read from a device. Um, I've never used LB. I don't know if you can actually use LB. Oh, it is a valid command. Let's see what it says. So if you're unsure of something, just go into this up here and it'll tell you. Load logic type from all output network devices with provided type hash using the provided batch mode. Average. Okay. Okay, so what that's saying is it'll say it might be useful on this one. Say if you've got uh, two or three station batteries that are all the same, the small station batteries, you want to read the um, charge level across all of them. Rather than inputting the charge level from each one individually, you could read the charge level from via the batch, this LB command, and then using a mode at the end, uh, zero for average, 11 for sum, sorry, you know, one for some, two for the minimum, so whichever one's the minimum of those, what the number is, three, whichever one's the maximum of those, uh, and you can use either the word or the number, okay. So, yeah, so I would typically, if I was going to do this, I could do read batch with mode zero, a number of batteries, and I could display that on an LED, uh, and then I know as that number comes down, my batteries are running down, and I don't have to keep going looking at them. I might try and set that up within this software later to show you how that works. So that's quite good. I didn't realize that command existed in the software, actually, that load batch. But it kind of makes sense, I guess. And to do that, you need to load batch. Yeah, okay, kind of makes sense. Um, right. So now you know how to... Bloody storm and development mode, you prats. You see the set of challenges. I'm going to wait in the storms out, so bear with me, guys. So, sorry about that. The storm seemed to go on for quite a while. Um, now it's over. I'm going to say pause because I don't want another storm to come wrong and affect us while we're doing this. So I just had a few comments to hopefully help you, help you. So you can either pause at this point or try and take a screenshot or whatever, just if you want to help you understand some of these bits. So um, if you want to put a comment in your program, you use the hashtag. I think the Americans call it the pound, but we call it the hash. It's just a little hush, you know, double down, double across. So, to alias, use alias to define devices that are attached to your pins on your IC housing. So these ones here. So they're defi uh, defined devices attached to the IC housing pins. You use define to define a device by its reference ID, which you obtain with the configurator card in the tablet. So, again, just to show what I mean by that, here's, come, here's a tablet, 
I have a configurator card in there. We turn it on, pointed at something, and you can see I've got a reference ID right up second from the bottom. So what we pointed at, that doesn't. Oh, it does have one actually. Um, that's got a reference ID one four zero two. If there's too many items to go in a page, you'll get a little scroll bar on the right hand side. You just scroll the mouse wheel, scroll down. So that one's two eight one one, and that's the number you use. Basically, that's the number you've got to use to define it. So that one's reference ID two three two five three four. Sorry. So that's a number. That's what I mean by the reference ID using the tablet. And you define it a name which you can understand, and then it's reference ID. So now I just got to call it. It was SP1, SP2 within the software, and the program knows I mean that device or that device. Um, so if you want to save or load from your devices, uh, I've just done the save because the load's the same. So save. Um, just a set straight S, lowercase s, all these are lowercase, all the commands are lowercase. Um, the program is case sensitive, so LED vertical would be different to um, LED vertical. So you can see now that when I put that lowercase, it doesn't recognize what it is, so it's red. Uh, it knows up here, if I put it back to capitals, it's gone white again, so it knows I mean that device uh, connected to D1. So just be aware of that as well, the color coding. So yeah, so it's lowercase s is just a straight save, and then you say where you want to save it, um, and that's for anything connected to your pins as alias. SB, save batch, save to a batch of the same devices using the prefab hash, which you obtain by using the F1 or the uh, Stationpedia, that's this. And there's the prefab hash, and that's the same for anything. I click on any of these, prefab hash, you know, click on that, even that's got a prefab hash. One thing to be aware of when you're doing this, it's sometimes easy to go into, right, I've got a heavy, I've got a solar panel, I'm using this one. It must be that prefab hash. It's not. It is a finished device that you're working to, you're using. So in this case, it would be um, that one, because yeah, that's the, solar panels we've built so it'd be that number there so just be aware of that it's very easy to inadvertently pick a kit or a derivative of that kit that looks very similar so in this case you could pick the dual one by mistake it looks very similar could have put that number in it wouldn't work but that's where you get the prefab hash from anyway so you use sb save batch prefab hash means all those devices on that network and again, it's only what's on that network. If it's on a different network, you won't see it. And then the last one is SD, which is save to device, which you've previously defined by its reference ID in the top of your program. So we're going to a specific item again here. So that's save to a specific device using its reference ref ID as defined at the top of your program. So that basically the number there. Okay, load is the same load to a device attached a pin. Load device is to a specific device um, that you've got connected to your network. And load batch is load from a specific type. Saves obviously saving out, load is pulling information in. So I hope that makes sense to you. You will be using all three of these within the programs. So let me just clear some of this down because we don't need all this information on here at the moment. And I just want to, um, I was just trying to get a point across that there's various ways of getting information from and writing information to your devices. So I'll leave this bit at the top here because we will be using those. Now writing a program. Now the next thing I want to cover is the formatting of a command within MIPS. This is a bit that really got me to begin with i just could not get my head around it so the way it works is or the way i like to think of it working is you have a command um in this case say save s save you have the recipient so where do you want to save the information to so um in this case we want to save something to actually no let's do a load let's do a load this will make more sense so same as save which is up around so so the command, so L for the command, where we want the information saved. So within MIPS, there are 
16 variables you can use, R0 through R15. I think it's still 16 of them. So we say R0, that's where we want the information to go in that variable. You then tell it where do you want it to come from. Now you can put D number in there, I could say D1, and it would know what it's talking about. So I could put D1 in there and it said D1, it knows it's a sun sense. But when you're getting programs are getting long and it's more difficult to read, it's better used to use the um, name you've, uh, alias to it just to keep things simple and understand what it is you're, you're talking about when you're writing a program. So we're saying load, that's a command, where we want it to go, where we're coming from, SunSense. Now, what we loaded from the SunSense, in this case, we want the variable vertical. Now that's turned orange because it's a valid variable. If I put anything else in there, it's red. It doesn't know what I mean. These commands, these variables, if, um, let's just go, um, oh, daylight, it's daylight, daylight. It's these logic um, commands here. So I can write any one of these in there. It will turn orange to see that this orange on here. I'm looking at vertical. I think I had a vertical, yeah, which is why it's gone orange. Okay, so that's what I can write. If you want to know what you can write and read from, actually in this case we're reading from this. We're reading the vertical. It's here, so you can only read it. Reading the vertical from that daylight sensor, which we defined here. So what that would do is, if I run this program now, it would set up these the devices attached to these pins with these names and it would set up these two devices on my network with these names and it would come down and would load into the variable r0 that number which is a vertical number from this daylight sensor which I know I have assigned to d0 on here you can see there it's red because I'm using just an open hand but it's telling you what's attached daylight sensor okay so that would read the vertical from a daylight sensor. Saving is the same. I could do save. Um, so that's a command. Now the recipient, if I want to save that to an LED display, it would be LED vertical. It's gone white because that's a valid device. What logic or what variable do I want to write? What logic, I guess I should call it, because that's what it calls in a program, do I want to write to? Now, on these LEDs, I know that setting is just a number that it will display. So I type in setting, again, capital S, all these are capitals when they're in orange. Setting is valid, so I'm now taking um, that R0 and writing it to that LED display. So just, again, I want to reiterate this. The way these are set up is command, recipient, and I like to call it operator. You call it whatever you like. For me, I, I call it operator. This is what we're doing with it. This is where it's going. This is command. So again, command, where's it going? In this case, it's going to the setting on the LED display. And the operator is the R0, which we loaded previously. Now, if I just run this program, it will start at the top, go through, stop. There's nothing else below it. Um, it won't keep looping, it'll just run through it once and stop. If I want it to loop, I need to tell it to loop. And the way we usually do this is by setting up, I've known them as classes in Python, and um, that just blocks the code. And if we call the main block of code main with a colon at the end, so now we, the program knows this bit, of everything under here is called main, and at the end it'll have jump main main these are purpley color this purple color means it's valid that j just means jump so the program now will start at the top come down come down main start jumping to main load the vertical reading from the daylight sensor and write it to r0 we'll then come down because there's nothing between there just ignore that save that vertical setting from the daylight center which is now r0 to the LED vertical, which is the LED display, come down, go to here, jump back to the top. Now the problem here is that will loop very quickly. We don't need it looping that quickly. So the next thing I attempt to do is yield. And as we saw previously, 
yield it just pauses execution for one clock tick which is about half a second so now the program starts at the top comes down only runs through this bit first time comes down jumps into main main goes pause for one clock tick pauses then it jumps on load the variable rc row with the daylight sensor vertical setting then jumps down ignores the white space and then says save the daylight vertical setting to the setting of the led vertical and it comes to the bottom jumps straight back to here first thing it does wait a clock tick so now it's not running constantly it is running constantly but it's running at a steady pace rather than just spinning through this forever slowing your computer down it's now just um, pausing each time it runs through because that yield command now that is a very simple program that should work if i oh, confirm this just make sure my leds are turned on yeah now at the moment that program's written but it's not gone anywhere so i need to so i'm selecting ic housing one ic housing one there's a chip in there and i want to export okay so i've exported that to that chip red there because it's not turned on click on that turn it on and boom straight away there we go we've now got the daylight vertical setting 40 it's actually got a few extra um, decimal places on there which are now displaying that setting so that is now running that little program we've just written um, that is very simplistic but really that's how the commands are made up they're all pretty much the same they're all what is the command what is the recipient what is the operation you want to do or where do you want to get the information from just operate i call it but like i say other people call other things now obviously load and save is very simple there are other commands and i say if you're unsure of commands you can't type them in here um so one or two is quite a bit is slt now slt you think what's well, slt but it's set less than that's all sounds or set less than slt and if you click in here it will tell you that register equals one if a is less than b otherwise zero so how does that look in the in the program so let's say we wanted to turn that led off led display off if the vertical is greater than 90. so we know what the vertical is we can set slt set less than now we need to tell it what variable we want to save the output of this command to so if i say this time r1 and i want r0 which is our vertical reading r0 is less than 90 then that will be on so the way this works and um, how can i put this so the way to write this is this what this program is doing is saying r1 equals one if r0 is less than 90. r1 equals zero if r zero is greater than 90. that one command is doing that so set less than if that is less than that that is one if that is more than that that is zero that's all it's doing you'd probably write it more something like this in python or actually when you write like that in python would be more like if r zero is greater than Ninety. Then R one equals zero. Else R one equals one. Uh, it wouldn't quite quite like that in Python, but it, it would be something like that. But you see, you're writing a lot more information uh, in these other programming languages it's just a one simple command in mips that does all that i'm hoping i'm explaining this sensibly i don't feel like i am but believe me that's all it's doing it's it's a simple line that does a lot and obviously because you've got less than you've got set greater than got set equals to set less than equal to uh set less than equal i think that's it yeah set less than and equal to set greater than or equal to um set 
zero uh, equal to zero. Yeah. Set not equal to zero. And if you're unsure what the command is, if you type it in to come up yelling, think, oh, what is that? Just hover over it. Just put a cursor on it, and it will tell you. So set S N E Z set not equal to zero. So register one, which would be in this case R1, if it was that command. If A, which is that, does not equal zero, which is would be well, you don't need the third command there. It would you just need you just need uh, R1 uh, R zero in that case because there's no third argument needed. So in that case, yeah. So set R1 if that doesn't equal zero. That one it would be set R1 if that does equal zero these ones you need a, a second um, as you see you've got the a b here you need you've got a second argument you need to check it against but so that's a bunch of them other things you need within a program are to be able to jump to different parts of the program so if something's true jump to this segment of the program and run that and that's called break and it's b and then break less than break greater than break and uh, not equal to zero so they're just the same these parts are the same it's just a letter you put in front is different otherwise it just works the same and all you're doing is again hover over it it'll tell you how to set up the the, the command the difference with the break is where you want it to jump to comes last and this one you're setting a variable at the beginning on the breaks where you want it to go comes at the end but we'll cover this in more detail. I just want to show you these things because it is a really powerful uh, language and it simplifies programming. I, I love it. I mean, I, I'm not very good with it. I, I know a lot of these basic commands, but I find it really p quite powerful to do these things. It's very simple to write code in a single line. Add, again, add is just a, you know, add. That's what you'd write, add. You could say R1, R1, or zero where that is a command that's a recipient and we're adding these two numbers together simple as that subtract is the same just sub multiply divide yeah there's all these kind of things i think that's tan and is tan in here sign yeah so you've got sine you've got cosine tangent you know, um, you've got mod. Is mod actually? I don't know. Mod, yeah, I mean, mod is in here. Oh, register equals a mod a. Okay, so that's different. What I'm used to mod. Okay, fair enough. Ignore that one. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for some kind of instruction, click on this. See if you can find it in the list. If you've got an idea what it is, you can. Um, you know, even once I want to break something, so it's got to be beginning with B. It's got to be one of these B ones. I want to break. I want to jump out to another bit of program. Sleep, pause, execution for a number of seconds. Yeah, so everything's in here that you need to be able to program. You just need to be able to find it. And again, if you're unsure, Google is your friend. <laughs> Google is always your friend. <laughs> I think I've gone that probably is a bit too deep, if I'm honest. But never mind. You get the idea. Just work on the, on the assumption that that's your command. That's the recipient. And that's the operator nine times out of ten you'll be right so what we're we doing on this one we were doing we wanted to turn the set less than so if r0 is less than 90 r1 is 1 so we can save that to the the recipient is a led on r1 so we're saving to the on command for that device R1. So if the vertical is less than 90, we will turn display on. If it's more than 90, we'll turn it off. And then we'll save the reading of vertical. So confirm, export. It's just gone off because it's 150. So we quick change that to, let's uh, say, 130. Come back, hover over it. Actually, make a 140 be quicker. There 
144. So if we're coming down to 140, it should turn back on again. There we go. So I know I've been stressing this quite a bit, but this, the order in which these bits go together is what really got me to begin with. Just, you know, why are you putting recipe? Why are you putting something there? You know, and then it just, yeah, it really got me. Um, it took me a good while to get my head around the um, formatting of the command. Like I say, it's command, recipient, and then operator, whatever that operator may be. And nine times out of ten, that'll work. So that's how to program using the computer. The laptop is pretty much the same. I forgot to edit. Let me just save this to create new test program one. Confirm. Now we go test program one. So now if I come out of that and I bring out my laptop. I can, I don't need that chip in there at the moment, I can go to edit, library, test program one, load it, overwrite, and that program I've just written is now in here. Now I want to make some changes because I don't want to write to LED, I want to write to the solar panels. So I don't also don't want to worry about it whether it's above a certain value or not. So let's just get rid of that. I don't want to write to the LED so I can get rid of that. What I do want to do is write to all of those solar panels at once. So it's, I want to save batch this time. Remember, save batch previously. Save to all the devices with the same hashtag. Confirm that. Go to Stationpedia. Go to the solar panel heavy. I know it's this one. Um, copy that hashtag to make sure it is that one. Yeah. Click on the hashtag number to copy it. Go to edit. So in this case, saving where I do want to save it or to recipient. Recipient is that hashtag. What do I want to do to it? I want to save the vertical. Reading from there. To the vertical reading of the solar panel. And that is information stored in R0. Confirm. Now I can export it, but it's not exporting it anywhere. There's nowhere to export it to. So I need to get the chip, put the chip in here, then click export. Pick the chip back up, put it back in the housing. Right, if I turn this on, we're going to get an error. And the reason I've got an error is because I haven't set up these pins. And the one that's looking for, um, if we've got the software. It's looking for something against these three pins. Now I don't need that one because I'm not writing the LED. So I can get rid of them two to begin with. So now I just need to define that one. Define it with the screwdriver. Screwdriver in hand. And I need that to be set to the daylight sensor. Daylight sensor, that's turned green. Have they moved? Oh yeah, they're moving now. If you look at them, they're moving. Now one thing I want to, the reason I put these at different angles is to show again positioning matters. That one's facing this way, that one's facing that way. They're not all referenced to north. So that one is moving um, the angle, whatever it is, based on its position. And so is that one. So that one's tilting this way. And this one's tilting that way. So again, position matters. So when you're putting down these solar panels, make sure you have them all facing the same way. And typically that would be uh, north. Where's the sun? Actually, we could just position this facing south. So, hold on a minute. Do, do. Magic stick out. Let's do that. That just takes the glass out, by the way. Um, when you use that magic stick, it builds to the latest, the full level. I've used it again. It just 
dismantles to the bot uh, base level. So I'm doing something like a printer. Just a side note, you see what I mean. So it's fully built printer. Uh, use a magic stick first time. It just takes it straight back to the base level. Now to build it, obviously just click on it again, and it goes through the various stages of the build, up to a Type 1 printer, and then up to the Type 2, which is advanced printer. Again, if I click it again, back to basic. That's just what it sticks for, it's quite useful. So this one, yep, so we, we want the sun tracking that way. That one's 180 degrees out, if you look. Yeah, so that's, ah, uh, yeah, see, I can't just face this to the sun now. Let me get my magic stick back on there. Because... As that is going up, that is going down. If I turned that 180 degrees, that would still be going down, but it would be going down this way. So I need to do something to the calculation that we're getting for the vertical before I feed it to the solar panel. So in which case, I would... Da -da, edit. Actually, confirm. What reading are we getting for the sun? So the sun vertical is 116... 117, so that's going up. What reading do we have on here? So that'll be the same, it's 160, 117. Um, I think I need that to be minus 90. So let's go to edit. So if I take that value, rather than write straight back, I go sub R1 R0 90 and then I change that to one. So now I'm saying subtract and save into R1, R0, which is our vertical reading, take away 90. Confirm. Export. Nope, so that's wrong. It's gone too far. So maybe I need to add 90. Don't need to change that, just add. Export. Right, but ignore that one for the minute because it's facing completely the wrong way. So now this one. is tracking the arc. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is. It's tracking the arc of the sun across the sky. And that will go from there all the way over to there. So what I would do in this case is I would go do what I was going to do, which is there's a magic stick. Move the lap, move that. Screwdriver. Dual facing the same way as that, which is north, that pin to the north, the connection, sorry, to the north, I think, yeah, and then run my cabling in. Is that moving the wrong way, actually? Oh, it is, isn't it? It's still moving the wrong way. Okay. In which case, 90 or 0. So in this case, I'm taking 90 or the vertical axis away from 90. Is that right? No, nope, still wrong. Um, 180.
No, I've just gone all the way down. I might be just uh, magic build my thing again. Minus 180. Somebody's you just got to play around with this to get the right setting. What position is that sun at? Fifty-eight. Sixty. So that's going back up again. So that must be... Zero. To sixty. What one's that giving us? Oh yeah, if we took this setting, one, four, four. Um, so it should be vertical plus ninety, I'm sure. Whoa! It's okay there for the moment. Vertical 69. Vertical 145. It's going the wrong way, that's a problem. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So put the chip back in. So right, so that sun's gone down. It's facing the right way when the sun's gone down. Let's see what happens when the sun comes up. We just have to wait till morning. Um, in the meantime. I want to load R5 Sun Sense Horizontal. So I'm loading R5 with a horizontal setting. Save batch to the same hashtag horizontal setting R5. Horizontal minus one four two. So yeah, let's wait till the sun comes up and then we'll see how we're doing with the tracking left and right and up and down. Uh, I've just seen one of Mars's moons going that way and the sun is just about to come up over the hill. Now we can see straight away that the solar panels are facing north when they should be facing east. So I know I need to adjust that. So let's go again on this one. We'll go um, add R6. So that's the information we're going to R6. R5, 90. So add 90 to R5. And then save R6 to the solar panel's horizontal setting. And hopefully this will swing back towards me. And the sun should come up over this way very shortly. Sun's down here somewhere at the moment. The vertical is 127. So if that's 90, it's down that way. So that must be 180, 90, 0, minus 90. Don't we down to minus 180. Oh, well, back round to 180. Yeah, so as that vertical gets to the 90, the sun will come up over the horizon. So we'll just wait for that. And we can see the sun starting to uh, light up the horizon because 105, so that's just 15 degrees below the horizon. And our solar panels are pointing in the right direction. They're as low down as it can go. So as the sun's come up, and what I've done in the night is just confusing things with myself. I pointed everything east, so I made sure that the solar panels are pointing east. So the, the attachment leg is pointing east. I head east that way where the sun's coming and I rotated my um, solar display to east. 
I think that's what's causing some of the problems I've got because it's started pointing north. I think it, it's best to just have it all pointing east. So there we go. Pointy end, east. Connection pin or connection leg pointing east. Um, we're certainly tracking the sun in a horizontal plane. Um, as the sun comes up, we should start tracking the vertical plane. Because when you saw the panels are zero degrees on the point at the horizon, nine degrees when they're pointing directly up. The sun is 90 degrees on the horizon, zero degrees when it's pointing directly up. So what I've done is I've tweaked the program. Yeah, that's it. I've sort, I think that's some working now. Are they tilting enough? Oh, I'm not sure, you know. That's still up 99%. Yeah, I think that's right now. So what I've done, if I just go back to the program. Um, I've got it, so we're reading the vertical reading. So we know that once at the horizon, that reading is 90 degrees, but the solar panels need to be pointing to zero. So if we take nine, take that 90 degrees, take it away from 90, we get zero. Um, so the, if the, when the sun is on the horizon, the solar panels will be pointing at the horizon. Um, and similarly, when the sun is dead above you, it's at zero degrees. Um, and we know when the solar panels are pointing directly up, they're at 90 degrees. So 90 minus zero is 90, so the sun's pointing... Um, Panels are pointing directly up. So it's 90 minus the vertical axis. When everything is pointing east, will allow the panels to track the sun. That's it. I knew I was getting confused. I, I shouldn't have pointing north. Apologies. It all needs to be pointing east. So anyway, that's just my stupidity that did that. Not, not the programming. The program did exactly what it was meant to do. So if you want to, uh, you know what we can do. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And get rid of that. Now I'll just add some information to this. Oh, I can't put a note on there, can I? Um, main program loop. Pause one clock cycle. Yeah, working perfect now. Read vertical angle from day, light, sense, and save to R0. So subtract R0 from 90 save batch to solar panel save r1 to solar panel vertical as a batch command um, read horizontal angle from daylight sense and save to R5 Add 90 to R5 and save in R6 and save in R1. Okay. Save R6 to solar panel horizontal 
tile. There's a batch command. Jump back to start of main loop. Main program loop. Right. What I'm going to do is try and save this to the Steam library along with some instructions. So hopefully you will be able to take this and use it in your programs. So what you will need to do is to have the sun sensor pointing east, have the solar panels pointing east. Do that, then this program should work as long as um, you have heavy solar panels attached. I should probably put a note in there that effect in there. Um, heavy solar panels heavy solar panel light So these are just a normal light solar panels, the standard ones, I need one piece of glass. So... I tried that into there, and into there. I just want to... Um, Right, so guys, what I've done, I've got some heavy ones here, the ones I've just been showing you using. I've set up a light solar panel and connected the same network. And what I've done quickly, let's get that my hand in the noise when I'm running with it, um, is I have added some remarks to the program. So main, yield, uh, load, uh, vertical setting, set R1 to 90 minus R0. And I've got for heavy solar panels, that line will set them for heavy solar panels, okay? If you're using light solar panels, you need this line here. So what I suggest is, depending on which one you've got, I'm just going to, what I suggest is depending on which one you've got is you just hash out the alternative. So if we don't, if you're using light, heavy, sorry, if you're using heavy solar panels, hash out the light settings and see light solar panel, light solar panel. Um, and then that will allow only the, Heavy solar panels to move, stand here and watch, you'll see. No, you'll not, because I haven't exported that program. Export. Right. Only the heavy ones should be moving, and the light ones not moving. Alternatively, alternatively if you've got light solar panels, hash out the heavy ones, and remove the hash from the light ones. Okay, again, hash out the heavy one. Remove the hash from the light one. And that way, the light one will do the tracking, and these ones aren't moving now. There you go, that one's moved, that one didn't. 
So hopefully that will help you. As I said, the hashtag is just a, a remark line. Um, if I do that like that and that like that, just makes it easy to understand which ones you need to remove. Okay, and I can just bring that back up a few lines. So, this is a very simple program. Hopefully you learned something from it. I will have to cut and splice this together just to make it make sense, probably. But basically, alias to assign something to a pin. SB, sorry, L to load something if it's connected to a pin. SB to save something to a batch, which is all the same type units using their hashtag. Uh, L is to load, I think I'll cover that. Add is to add, sub is to subtract, and it's always command, recipient, operators. Command, recipient, operators. Command, recipient, operators. Nine times out of ten, that'll work. And this one, obviously, you jump main, you got command. And the recipient is actually the main. You're jumping to main. Uh, and then the yield is just a single command on its own. So you kind of remember that. Hopefully by the time I've cut this together, this all makes sense. <laughs> it's been quite a long video trying to show what I wanted to show. And I don't know if I've explained it very well. Please let me know in the comments. Please hit the like and subscribe. As you see, that panel's no longer tracking. Oh, yes, it is. That panel's tracking. They're not because I've set it up for light. If you've got any questions, do ask me in the comments and I do try and respond to them all. For now, Strong Fly Gamer wishing you good night.